in the front line certainly we're, we're um, seeing um, more like clarity on the on the, the Venethlas plus the Binatuzumab um, combination from the CLL14 trial which we had updated um, it shows that that, that uh, if pay, well, a few things really but first of all the MRD negative patients are doing very well um, the, the, the duration of follow-up now is 39 months or just over median and so we're getting two plus years off therapy and there's still a big difference between the methylaxis of inotuzumab and uh, glamisol of arm in, in that trial. Um, patients who achieve MRD negative remission do significantly better than those who are MRD positive regardless of the therapy which is what we see consistently across trial, uh, trials. Um, the patients who complete the 12 months of therapy with venetoclax uh, do better than the ones who don't complete. And, and so most of the patients who are failing early are the ones who don't manage to complete the 12 months of, of therapy. Um, I'm still slightly concerned about the 17P patients in that trial. Um, we need to see retreatment to be a little bit more follow-up. Um, the advantage is seen across all the other, all of the prognostic groups, so the unmutated as well as the mutated. Um, we're still waiting because of the long length of follow-up for retreatment data, which will be important in that in that trial. So, so it, it, can, it consolidates the uh, frontline um, data for the for that combination. Um, still in elderly patients, uh, and then we have some data um, in, ter in terms of uh, a little bit later of the triplets, uh, but mainly phase two data, which are leading into our frontline uh, trials. So, so combinations of ibutin and betaclax. Uh, for example, and that, that combination plus a binatuzumab, uh, again, showing very deep remissions, which um, at the moment we're waiting, the phase three trials have been recruited or, or are currently finishing recruitment. So maybe it's a year or two before, or three before we see the, the, the phase three data for those combinations. In the, the last uh, setting, and a little bit in front line, so, so first of all, the next generation uh, BTA inhibitors, so a calibrated, and we had two abstracts, one, uh, updating the treatment naive patients and showing really uh, very robust um, um, re responses. And then one about safety for across a that relapsed and mainly refract refractory patients. Uh, again, um, not not comparative, so not compared to our but showing that acalabrutinib is, is um, well tolerated. There seems to be... Um, uh, on the face of it, uh, slightly less cardiac toxicity, which is our main concern with ibrutinib, although, um, of course, we don't have as much follow-up as or anywhere near as many patients. So we do really need to see um, some head-to-head -head trials which are coming al along. And then I think the um, so the combination, so we have, um, we, we reported, uh, Andrew Rostrom reported from our group, the uh, clarity trial, which we've reported previously, or the combination of Ibrutinib plus Venetoclax um, in uh, relapsed refractory CLL, um, really showing that patients who respond very quickly, so the MRD response early on in the treatment, really defines how deep the remission is going to be, and, and so it gives us a clue as to to which patients may need more therapy than IV. Uh, most patients remain in remission and doing very well. Many of them off treatment. So Andy showed some of that data. Uh, and then um, the first triplet data that we've seen with Zanu, Brutinib, uh, Venetoclax, and Abinutuzumab in a phase, in a phase um, two trial. So showing it's well tolerated and we see deep remissions. And then in front line for the combination, I should have, should have said the, the Captivate, we had an update of the IV Captivate trial, which is a phase two, but a large one. So it looks like the combinations are, are you know, certainly they're tolerated well and we're seeing very deep remissions. Uh, in relapsed refractory disease as well.